Niger has been plunged into chaos. The president's been detained, and for now, at least the army has taken control. But what happened? How did we get here? And most importantly, what comes next? Here are four things to watch as the situation in Niger continues to unfold. Taking power is the easy part. The presidential guard locked up the president. They seized the state broadcaster and announced on air they were, quote, putting an end to the current regime. Okay, so now what? Holding on to power is a very different beast than taking it. The head of the army has said that to avoid bloodshed, he will support the coup. But will rank and file soldiers fall in line? Remember, many of them are stationed on a base where they're being trained by French and American troops, whose countries adamantly support ousted President Mohamed Bazoum. On the streets of Niger's capital, people are divided. Supporters of the coup lit cars on fire and attacked the ruling party headquarters. Those who backed the president were dispersed by gunfire. It's still not entirely clear where President Mohamed Bazoum is, but he's not going quietly. He's tweeting out messages to the country, and Bazoum's still taking phone calls from the UN Secretary General and the US Secretary of State. Niger is a landlocked country in the middle of West Africa. It's racked with poverty and in the midst of years-long Islamic insurgency. But it's a key Western ally, and it's a crucial piece to a larger regional puzzle. This region below the Sahara has been beset by military coups recently. Mali in 2020 and 2021, Burkina Faso last year, Chad had an unsuccessful coup attempt last December, Sudan has been in a constant state of crisis for years, and now Niger. There are at least a thousand U.S. troops in Niger. After the coup in Mali, French troops were kicked out of the country, so they set up a new headquarters alongside the Americans in Niger. And all those Western troops are a long-standing grievance. They're training the very army that now has to decide if it will support the coup or rally around the president. But there's another player here as well. Take a close look at the videos of demonstrations in support of the coup. They're waving a Russian flag. Russia is key to all of this. When the military seized power in Burkina Faso and Mali, both countries moved away from the West and forged a tighter bond with Russia. Instead of working with the French military to fight Islamic insurgents, they turned to the notorious private army of Russia's Wagner Group. In a quirk of weird timing as the coup unfolded, Russia hosted a summit of African leaders in St. Petersburg. And guess who was there? This guy. Evgeny Prigozhin, the head of the Wagner Group. He's supposed to be in exile in Belarus after staging the first dance moves of his own coup, but he's obviously still useful. When Putin wants to increase Russian influence in Africa, Niger is a prime opportunity. If the coup halts, if the putschists manage to survive, that might uh, create this opening for uh, Russia to try and strengthen its cooperation. Coups are chaotic, and you know who benefits from chaos? Insurgents. We've seen that in Burkina Faso and Mali and Chad and Sudan and now Niger. And that scares the heck out of the UN Secretary General. The whole belt south of the Sahara is becoming an extremely problematic area with terrible consequences. The swath of countries south of the Sahara are racked by climate change. Niger alone is losing an estimated 250,000 acres to the desert every year. A combination of poverty, lack of workable land, and political instability is a tailor-made environment for insurgent groups. The last thing you ever want when you have a security vacuum and a governance vacuum is for non-state actors to be able to have a safe space to hide, recoup, and um, figure out a way to expand from there. And these jihadist groups have managed to do that quite well across Burkina Faso. We don't want Niger to look the same. The question looming over all of this is whether there's much the West can do. After 20 years of war in Iraq and Afghanistan, there's not a lot of domestic support for America's role as global police force. So in a lot of ways, this coup is a key test of domestic stability, regional security, and global politics all in one go.